So the other part um, that is also important to understand are our stem cell. There's some interesting research that discusses that all of the genes that I briefly mentioned, like the mTOR, the FOXO, the sirtuin genes, that all of those are also affecting the stem cells and how well they work. And a stem cell is a factory of all kinds of growth factors and, and tr transmitters and messengers. So if we have a neonatal, like a very young stem cell, that has almost 300 of those kinds of growth factors. But when we are aging, it has less. And so the ability for regeneration and to make the cells um, out of it that are functional uh, declines with age. So think about, for example, stem cell transfusion. One of the issues that are um, related to that is that the um, culture medium that is used for uh, stem cells does have a high percentage of oxygen, so it causes oxidative stress. And uh, it's been shown that the stem cells can express senescence marker, meaning that they are already aging by the time they're getting um, out of that culture medium. So you can have stem cells, you know, for example, out of cord blood, but because they're expressing senescent markers, uh, that they can cause inflammation. So this idea of uh, how do we improve our stem cell function and what do we do with this? So certainly regenerative medicine is a fantastic field. So there's a couple ways of addressing it. Some of the peptides and the uh, ability to reverse senescence also work in stem cells. Uh, the mTOR pathway is also something that does control the genes in um, the stem cells as well as some of the other genes that I discuss. There are studies where clearly uh, it's been shown that regular cells can be reversed back into stem cells. And there was some amazing research out of Beijing that showed that by applying certain micromolecules to those cells, you can rejuvenate and back engineer a stem cell. There is now technology that is quite amazing in which we can give nutraceuticals that have been specifically uh, evaluated in clinical studies that increase your own stem cell production by up to 100%. Um, and then if those stem cells are being age reversed in your body, uh, they can perform their functioning for regeneration in a much better way. So that is also an important aspect of anti-aging. Exosomes are the microvesicles that transport information between cells. It's been shown that these exosomes contain um, microRNA, which is the information of stem cells, and they're kind of like a taxi cab um, when you're looking at uh, New York City from the 40th floor and you look down on the street, you see a taxi cab driving there, and it's that small you can barely see it. And the big skyscraper is your cell. So this little taxi cab doesn't look like much from way up there, but if you go way down there to the level of the taxi cab, you're going to see how complicated it is and how much information is in that taxi cab to make it drive. So it's sort of like that. And the amazing thing about these exosomes is that we can infuse exosomes and we can transfer information and we can do that specifically to the cell types that we want to uh, rejuvenate. So 
this is a new technology that is um, utilized and it's extremely promising for all kinds of regenerative purposes for wound regeneration. Um, there's some amazing research going on in Russia with the delivery of um, cytotoxic drugs and exosomes uh, for cancer. Um, there's a lot happening in this age reversal arena. So much so that with these different targets uh, and different modalities, we are definitely able to make great inroads um, in the prospect of longevity. I do want to mention that the pathways of um, accessing mitochondrial DNA, I talked about that a little bit in um, my peptide video, through mitochondrial DNA peptides like MOTC, it's also very important because, again, by decreasing insulin resistance and improving the utilization for uh, glucose, there's a huge anti-aging effect. Um, you know, people may not understand how important sugar is and, and glucose intolerance and insulin resistance, but if you think about that now Alzheimer's dementia is called type 3 diabetes. That basically the reason why the brain is um, being injured is called uh, glycosylation byproducts. It's sugar deposits and, and abnormal um, uh, proteins that are just making the brain dysfunctional, but they deposit everywhere. So they cause kidney dysfunction and nerve dysfunction, etc. So that already happens even though you're not yet diabetic. So again, the control of metabolism is everything in longevity and anti-aging. So I wanted to give you this update. Um, the research in the anti-aging arena is extraordinary. Uh, we do have controllers of aging as genes. Uh, they are not called immortality genes. But if we are affecting those groups, can we reach that fabled longevity of 200 years? Um, there seems to be great indication in um, animal studies that it could be so. Rapamycin has been given in dogs, and uh, it improves their heart function. Uh, it um, makes them age extremely healthy and extremely well. Uh, it's been given in old mice, uh, an equivalent uh, to human, started at age 60, uh, and again, extending lifespan and decreasing the onset of disease of aging. So what do we have on our hands here? Uh, uh, possibilities, possibilities of extending human lifespan in a meaningful way and uh, being able to prevent some of the most devastating diseases. How far-reaching is that? You know, diseases of aging is not just your diabetes, your heart disease, your cancer, your osteoporosis, macular degeneration, uh, cataracts. All of those are mediated by the exact same genes that if they start to function, then those diseases happen. So what we're talking about is this is the regulatory mechanism for all diseases of aging. Is it possible to take somebody back in terms of their overall um, youth and age regress them? Physically, even that is possible, yes, because if you understand that from a biological perspective, if we start producing the same hormone levels of a 20-year-old and have all the nutrients uh, there and the cell signaling is optimized, there is nothing that would inhibit us from becoming stronger, smarter, more agile, live longer, better. Again, as I discussed in the beginning, the mind component of this is key. Nikola Tesla talked about that in the century in which we are studying non-physical phenomena, we will make more progress than all the previous centuries combined. The understanding how consciousness is affecting 
our bi biological organism is paramount to success in this. Um, so I think that we have a lot of fascinating um, and very interesting uh, journey ahead of us. There's an anti-aging cocktail that's being refined significantly. If you are understanding these genes and what to do and how to do it, uh, then you too can be on your way. I want to thank you for watching and uh, getting educated about uh, these areas. There will be more upcoming videos. And all of these services and treatments you can find at AM Medical. You can find us uh, on Facebook. You can follow us on, uh, us on our YouTube channel as well as our website, which is uh, ammedicalmd.com. Thank you for watching.